Everybody see how we got rejected initially off the five day moving average, right? It's this orange line. It's pretty basic stuff here, at least from where I'm sitting at. We are either going to reclaim the five day moving average and go back to the 297 upper Bollinger Band, or we're going to Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, uh, good evening everybody, and uh, welcome to another edition of the, the Axis of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody had a really good day trading. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, first and foremost, I want to uh, send uh, a very, very, uh, very deserved and much thank you, okay, to all the men and women uh, on this Veterans Day for putting your lives uh, on the line to kind of defend what we take for granted uh, every single day, which is our freedom. So I, I definitely want to start out the broadcast by saying thank you. I think we can, uh, I can speak on behalf of all Americans out there. Uh, we pray for you and may God bless you uh, every single day. So thank you uh, very much. So let's talk about the market. Um, okay, so the Dow rested today. Very, very much uh, needed rest after just an absolute insane run, okay? Uh, for the last couple of days, you've seen a tremendous disconnect. We started talking about that on last night's video uh, from the Dow stocks compared to the NASDAQ 100 names. Uh, in that NASDAQ 100 names, uh, we saw a lot of names like we talked about last night that had this really tremendous run on the whole stay at home movement, right? Uh, so they got taken down. You had a nearly, what, five, 600 point decline uh, in the NDX in the last several days. So we talked about last night how I believe today was going to be kind of a tricky day. And the only reason why I say it was going to be a, a tricky day, I know I didn't want to really sell the market today. And we, we discussed this uh, at Morning Strategy you know, pretty clearly. I, I wanted to kind of give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, but not for a kind of a massive rally, kind of a, a potential of what can happen next. And we'll talk about that in a second. And for the majority of the day, for all you guys, uh, especially who trade tech, you can attest to this. It was a pretty insignificant day. I would say literally about 90%. And despite the, the NASDAQ composite, and again, again, big disconnect this time around, very strong close uh, on the NDX, on the composite, uh, up 200 and change compare, compared to a flat Dow Jones Industrials, it really doesn't paint a picture of what actually happened today, or at least towards the end of the day. And I think what the Bulls did today at least put themselves in a position of what potentially could happen next. And at least now, going into tomorrow's session, we have a very specific line in the sand, both to the upside and to the downside. Uh, for all you guys who've been kind of watching this broadcast for a very, very long time, and if all, if all you guys are joining us for the very first time here, um, I love the five-day moving average. Um, I believe that it is the shortest sentiment of what potentially could happen next uh, in an interval, whether it's daily, uh, intraday, whatever the case may be, okay? It gives you a lot of uh, clues of where the market could happen next. And when the market confirms the five-day moving average, usually the you know, market will go higher. If the market confirms it to the downside, usually selling uh, will follow. So for example, here, you know, here's the first time we lost the five-day moving average. This is kind of this orange line, right? The market started going lower, lower, lower. The first day they reclaimed the five-day moving average, they had this really, really big run. And two days ago, we lost the five-day moving average and we went right back down to the 50-day moving average, which kind of brings us back to today. And again, I, I don't think today's session really, a lot of people are, are really going to put the fine points of it of importance heading into tomorrow's session, but I do because right we're back into this kind of um, reflection area, kind of uh, crossing the road. And again, it's realistically pretty simplistic technical analysis going into tomorrow's session. Everybody see how we got rejected initially off the five day moving average, right? It's this orange line. It's pretty basic stuff here, at least from where I'm sitting at. We are either going to reclaim the five day moving average and go back to the 297 upper Bollinger Band or we're gonna get rejected again at today's high, roughly around the 290, 290 half area, and start rolling over. The key for the bulls, any close tomorrow uh, over 290 is super bullish, then you have a measured potential at 297, 
any close tomorrow below 283 well then starts to retest the bottom of this channel here which is the roughly the 50 day moving average so yes i think um you know to, to, without really going into some dramatic uh, rant about it i do believe uh, tomorrow will be a pretty important day for sentiment. Again, bulls, you are in control. Okay, it's up to you to confirm today's prices because if we do, we have a lot of value for tomorrow. And speaking of value, we had probably the least amount of value that I can remember uh, in a very, very long time today. Um, last night when I was doing the video, I kind of, uh, you know, I made a joke and I tweeted out about it. I said, well, if today's session speaking yesterday, if today's session was really, really high value of day two selling on the stay at home stocks, well then tomorrow, which is today, looks like the Jets, the New York Jets uh, season, right? So there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm. There wasn't a lot of value into today's session. So I just kind of wanted to see what would happen. Where would the sneaky value come? Is there value ever going to come? Because again, the one thing that unfortunately uh, the social media environment will always tell you, there's something always out there, right? There's something always out there, but there's not always something out there for your specific process, for your specific approach. So it's very, very important to understand that. Unfortunately, a lot of traders, when they see this, there's constantly, you know, there's always opportunity somewhere. They believe it because that's what they're told 30 times a day. And if they're not done with their day in the first 15 minutes, that means the day is over, which is the absolute false. So today was a situation that, again, I didn't see a lot of value. I definitely did not want to make sales uh, selling the market after that big, big run down. Okay, so I wanted to see how the day played out. And the greatest thing about trading, especially trading pivots, we, we constantly talk about, it's the ability to organically remove the fear of missing out. So the days that nothing spots, uh, highlights my process or very little, I, I have no problem kind of gathering information that day, uh, getting more screen time, getting more, uh, building a, a stronger foundation for, you know, trading days going forward. And I have zero, zero risk on because again, it's very, very costly to trade when you don't have a valid opinion that is confirming macro. And that's very, very important. So if you look at today's session, uh, again, it, it, it kind of, you know, we, we talked about the ability, um, we talked about the ability of having patience. Okay. Uh, again, we, we, we use that word uh, we use that word sometimes very, very loosely, uh, but it is incredibly important, especially for your development as a professional trader or aspiring professional trader to really let the market come to you. And if you look at my notes pre-market today, um, let's see, let's see here. Yeah, so here's basically my notes. I mean, you know, I put in some pivots. Uh, we saw pretty good aggressive uh, headlines today about covid um, all over the place. I think New York, uh, New York, I think Governor Cuomo said New York had nearly 5,000 new cases overnight. That's a lot. That really is a lot. Uh, we're seeing big spikes everywhere. I, I believe they talked about Texas uh, having over a million cases. So, you know, I thought the value today at somewhat, at somewhat, okay, would have been at least uh, COVID name specific because if they got taken down the last couple of days, well, if again, if you're getting a rising spike in COVID again, well, they're the ones that are going to benefit from it. So I, I wrote here, you know, only value I really see today if we get a bounce back day in the COVID names because of the huge uh, spikes. Again, stay patient. You don't need to trade every single day. Uh, you should be in scalp mode. And I, and I very, and I, I want to reiterate this again, every single day, especially for the newer trader. If you're an options trader, what do you need, right? You need a big potential move and you need it now. You don't need it to, you know, tomorrow, the next day, you need it now. Because not only are you fighting price action, you are fighting time, right? Time is not on your side. That is why uh, equity versus options is, is grenades versus oranges. It's a completely different, uh, different conversation. Same methodology, but a completely different conversation. So days that you know you're not going to get a lot of value or a lot of potential range expansion, you have to be disciplined enough to sit on your hands and say, hey, wait a minute, let me wait for that value day. Again, that could be tomorrow. Again, very, very good uh, possibility if we start confirming channels. But this is a day I said to myself, look, I have no expectations 
right? Nothing, I, you know, again, I want to see how this day plays out. Let's take some scalps if we have them. Let's move along and see if we can get a little bit more clarity, a little bit more clues of what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. So, you know, I started putting in pivots one by one and, you know, none of them, like literally none of them uh, in the beginning um, did anything. Uh, SE gapped up, you know, they got downgraded this morning, gapped up, never came close to going red. BYND, I was looking for kind of a confirmation of yesterday's move into the upper channel. It never got there. Um, NEO, right? So NEO is a stock that never goes down, right? It's the whole EV, next Tesla. How many of your neighbors have a NEO? Raise your hand. I'll wait. Anyway, uh, 39.50, sneaky area. If it builds below, it might start to flush. And I said this, look, not every single trade is for every single person. Uh, very experienced traders only. The macro, and again, guys, this is the macro number, continues to be that 38 level. Um, so, you know, it made its initial move. If you look at the 60-minute channel, it made its initial move. It took out, uh, you know, it took out this 30, what is it, this 39 and a half area, right? It took These are the two channels. This is where I got 39 and a half. It took out 39 and a half, and it went down, you know, it went down about a buck. If you did take it, I didn't participate in this trade. Again, it's just, just not something that I'm, I was on a head for today. If you did take it, you got that initial move, and then this thing is just a still monster. But again, guys, this 38 level, this whole channel going forward, just set an alert for 38. If this thing one day in this lifetime or the next starts building down 38, there will be a more organic uh, flush in this uh, name. Uh, this was the big one, but not necessarily even this one, which this one was good too. The Zoom had two big pivots. This one I took, uh, this one I took, it was a really nice pivot. So Zoom, again, we were looking for the bounce back on the virus plays. So here was the 395. You guys see this whole channel here, right? This whole channel here. So 395, it started confirming. It confirmed the 400 initial opening range high and it went right to supply here at 405, right? So let's remember that area, 405 as well. So beautiful, beautiful trade. I was happy with the trade because again, I didn't, I didn't expect a lot of today. And I said, all right, you know what? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens next. And literally the market for the beta market did absolutely nothing nothing for the next four hours. It was one of the more painful days I can remember. But again, I was okay with it because again, I understand you're not going to get dealt aces like we had yesterday every single day. So you're going to be fine with this. I was watching FSLY. It never came close. To, it never came close. I was watching Lyft. It never came close, right? So I'm sitting there. So I said, all right, okay, this is going to be a day that again, you really have to be patient and see what you have. And I said, look, this is the least amount of value I've seen in a very while compared to yesterday that we've seen one of the biggest uh, values that I've seen in a long time. And this is where I screwed up. And I, and, I, and I apologize to everybody on the feed. But but again, you guys are not in uh, the live webinar. So you, you're not hearing the live commentary step by step. And it's very important for me to protect you first, okay, protect you first, and then you can eat later. So um, it looks, you know, again, uh, 118 needs to reclaim supply. And when you look at Apple, it did, right? It did, and it, and it went to, it's, it's trading roughly around 20, 120. However, that's not the case. If you look at right here, this whole channel here was 118, and it just couldn't get through. There was a seller, there was a seller, there was a seller. At this point of the day, um, at this point of the day, we really didn't get a lot of visibility, okay, of what the market wanted to do. Remember, these, these NASDAQ names exploded like two hours later. Um, you know, it started going down and nothing really good. So I, and I, and I really said, look, I, there's, a, there's a seller there. He's not letting it go. S worst case scenario, use break even as you stop. You know, and again, the stock exploded later. And guys, remember, we're not trying to win. You know, we're not trying to get the guess the closing price. We're trying to win our interval. And, and again, the most important part is if they can't reclaim a whole number with a lot of value very, very quickly, your job is not to sit there like a deer in headlights. Your job is to make a decision to get out of Dodge. You can always buy it back. So again, for all you guys uh, who did sell a uh, break even, uh, again, I'm just trying, especially if you guys are on the Twitter feed, for you guys in the live webinar, you kind of know why it hits supply. But for all you guys who are not privy to, to hearing me, the comment literally play by play on every single tick, uh, it's very, very important that, again, that you recognize the order flow uh, and you keep, keep it moving. So I apologize there. Um, so, Neo, yeah, take on the way down, 38 big level. Zoom, that was the first move. Take on the way uh, up. Uh, again, this is kind of what I was talking about. It's having issue at 118. Consider using break even. So, again, uh, it is what it is. Uh, NET, uh, 65 needs to build. I still like NET for tomorrow. Here's the 65 channel 
right? Here's the whole 65 channel. It took a long time, but uh, it finally traded to like 66 and change. I still like the daily chart, right? If it could confirm, if you guys notice, it stopped at the same place twice. So if it could reclaim this channel tomorrow, we might get uh, a pretty good move. And again, I do like a lot of value uh, for tomorrow's session. Uh, Pfizer, I don't think, got down to 37. I don't think Pfizer got down to uh, 37.70. It did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I missed this trade. It did. It got down to, it, look at the low of the day. Oh, no, it didn't. I'm sorry. It got down to 37.90. I apologize. It got down to 37.90. That's why I missed it. Uh, for a bounce, uh, Netflix, uh, 487 needs to build. Uh, for cash flow, move to 494.91. Uh, look, look, you know, this is pretty much where Netflix, this is pretty much where Netflix closed, closed right at 491. Again, setting up a pretty good session uh, for possibly for tomorrow. Uh, and I said again, and I said this, this is pretty much I expected. I'm sitting tight, and this was the big one, right? This is the big one right here. So there was rumors. I mean, there's r rumors circulating that uh, the governor of um, the governor of New Jersey was considering uh, closing schools. I think Scott Wapner from CNBC. Uh, retweeted it, you know, again, every, this, there's so many, so much COVID news, it's kind of hard to remember everything. But I said, look, sweet spike this morning, right? Uh, it needs to reclaim 397 to 50, 398 to wake. And then I tweeted out a minute later, I said 399 a little cleaner. Guys, look at the move that Zoom made. Congratulations for everybody who, who caught this trade. So here is the 397, right? Here is the 397, right here, 397, 398. It took that out and literally it just absolutely exploded. Um, you know, went to 420 in about four minutes. Just one of the craziest spikes uh, I've seen. You could you could see it here at one o'clock how incredible the spike was. So here was the you know here was the 398 399 area just went out of its mind again. Uh, COVID's no joke, man. These are the guys who are going to always benefit with any type of closings with restaurants, this, that, the other thing, any business. So again, a really, really aggressive move there. Uh, and that's kind of it. Yeah. So that's kind of it. So I, I think for tomorrow's session, uh, again, pretty, pretty clean numbers here. Uh, I think, you know, if I want to definitely give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, when you go through charts now, you'll see a lot of really good setups, but again, you can't anticipate the market going higher the market needs to confirm the Q's five-day moving average. And if it does, again, if you go through charts tonight uh, with your beta names, you're going to see a lot of really good uh, setups. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless you all. Again, I want to thank all the veterans out there uh, for really protecting our way of life. And, again, may God continue to bless you and your families. Guys, have a good night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.